Hey everybody, Kyle Mike here from MLive.com. Joined by Nate Adkins as always. Back in Allen Park, it feels like we haven't left in about 48 hours or so. A little tired, uh, one more day to go. Uh, but rounds two and three going down um, tonight, uh, just a few feet above us, uh, Bob Quinn's war rooms up there, um, taking Carrion Johnson, running back out of Auburn in round two, uh, trading up with the, 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 the Patriots to get Carrion Johnson. Uh, and then in round three, going out there and getting uh, Tracy Walker, a name that I think zero reporters were, were expecting, particularly uh, in the third round. He was getting more of like a fifth or sixth round range. Um, safety, defensive back out of uh, Louisiana Lafayette. A uh, couple of surprise moves uh, up and down today. Nate, what were your initial thoughts on what Bob Quinn did? The most jarring thing was the fact that he was bold up to trade up in the second round. We'd heard all about how he wanted to add picks in this draft mm -hmm. and was put that out as an advertisement to the league. Stays put it in round one over to offers to trade back, and then in round two he trades up. And so what it does is it gets some players at, at positions of need, like Aaron Johnson. A lot of us thought they'd go running mm -hmm. back in the second round. But they're light on picks now, much lighter than they've been the past couple of years. It's a bold move considering they're going under a scheme change on defense and they didn't go defense the first two rounds. I think it just puts a lot of pressure on that second round pick of Carrion Johnson. There are other yep. running backs on the board. They must really, really like what he brings. Either a mix of the power back, the culture. I think there's some mix in there that they, they just felt like was that much better than everyone else. Yeah, I completely agree. That was my big takeaway from today. I don't think we're necessarily shocked to see a running back in round two. Um, defensive back in the third, I mean, you know, arguably they have a long term need uh, at safety. Um, maybe I would have thought a defensive lineman or something, but I can see it for defensive back. But when you look at who they got in the second and third round and then how they went about it, particularly in the second with the trade for Johnson, they're, they're, Quinn is betting on himself. He's betting on carry on Johnson. Mm -hmm. um, I think his hand was a little bit forced. There, you know, there's three running backs who went in the first round. I think most people are only expecting maybe two. And then there's two more running backs taken in the first six picks. Uh, so there's a bit of a rush there. Um, and at that point, carry on Johnson was the best guy on the lines board. Quinn said tonight that, 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 that carry on Johnson was the best running back, the one they wanted the most coming into day two. And once the other two guys um, went before him, I think his, he felt his hand was forced a little bit. There was another, I don't know, seven, eight picks before the lines were on the clock. They thought maybe somebody else would grab him. So his hand was forced just a little bit, but still. You came into the draft with the fewest number of picks in the NFL, and then you gave up a fourth-round pick to go get Carrion Johnson, uh, a guy who had some injury problems and stuff at Auburn. You're, you're really betting that he's going to stay healthy, that he's going to be a good fit for what you have going on in your backfield. Uh, Carrion Johnson better be good because if he's not, you've only got five picks in the draft and you wasted the second-round pick on a running back who's no good. That's a, that's a major problem. Yeah, especially with what they have to fix in the running game. You know, the pressure's on them with that. I'm amazed to hear a GM say that the guy they got was the top of that position yeah. coming into the day. I, I don't know if that was the case or, or if it's just like you said, guys were going off and they felt like they were going to be out of options for a one they really liked. The interesting thing, though, was not only did they take – Carrion Johnson over Darius Geis, but they felt the need to trade up so that mm -hmm. Carrion wouldn't be gone because they didn't want to take Garrett Darius Geis. Bob Quinn elaborated on that in, in his own vague terms, but sort of <laughs> clarified what you've been hearing out there, that there's just a lot of concerns teams have about the personality. They mentioned different issues. You've heard things about his meetings with teams. Yep. And Quinn said that they had some concerns as well. So yeah. you just wonder how much – I really think culture plays into this because – Carrion Johnson couldn't be more different if you think about, you know, he's considered like the leader of the Auburn football team. He's one of the toughest players out there, plays through injuries, very much fits this profile that's kind of like what Frank Ragnow was in the first round, the sort of tough uh, guy that just goes to work all the time. And it's interesting that they, they really wanted that over what some people see as a more talented player in Darius Geis. Uh, and then as for Tracy Walker, um, I'm still getting to know the guy. I mean, I didn't. I knew the name from reading it in some draft preview stuff, but that was basically the extent of it. I don't think anyone mm -hmm. in this building outside of the war room knew much about him either. I think it's an interesting pick. Um, again, there's maybe some long-term needs there at defensive back. Lover's going to up a little bit in age. you got some expiring contracts after the year and so forth. Um, but you do have bodies there. You have Quandre back. You've got, um, you know, you got some, some depth there. I'm, I'm curious to, to see what that means for a guy like me, maybe Miles Killebrew, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a safety that's kind of faded from the picture. Maybe he's going to play some at linebacker. I, I don't know. He's got maybe the physical profile to do that in the Patricia scheme. I'm not really sure. Uh, but I think it poses some real questions for guys they have in-house because now they got a ton of defensive backs on the roster. And even if you look at the carry-on pick as well, in addition to having um, Blunt and all these guys back, I really wonder what the future holds for Amir Abdullah. Um, if the Lions are looking to add picks 
uh, on the last day of the draft, maybe Abdul is a guy you can you can draw some interest for. I don't know what kind of market's out there mm-hmm. for him. His his contract next year's for a million dollars, which is going to be I think a lot for a, a, team, a team to take on. But um, if somebody likes him and they can pick up a six six round pick, maybe that's something the Lions go after. Yeah, I think that's what they're going to have to consider doing because after this trade down didn't work, that he was trying to he said he was trying forever to do it between mm-hmm. the second and third round picks. Yeah, you run out of options to get extra picks here. It is interesting, you know, what these moves spell for other guys. My biggest takeaway was actually about Quandre Diggs because, you know, this offseason they went out and they signed Tavon Wilson to a deal. They signed a cornerback safety combo guy into Sean Shedd, mm-hmm. and they draft another one. And Quandre's in a contract year. But it's interesting because last year we said the same thing about Quandre. We thought they were edging him out of nickel, and he goes and he wins that job, mm-hmm. and then when safety goes down, he moves there. So just more pressure on a guy that I think kind of feeds off of that, and it'll be fascinating to see how he handles it. Looking quickly forward to day three, we talked – Nate before about Bob Quinn putting the pressure on himself and kind of betting on himself. I think going with the the running back and then the defensive back, he's really putting pressure on himself that that, that standing pat at defensive line is okay. I think coming to the draft, there was a consensus that defensive tackle and defensive end, the defensive line in general was going to be this team's biggest need and something they had to address early, particularly considering this draft is kind of weak at, at these positions. Mm-hmm. And I hear we are going into uh, we're going going into round four where the Lions don't even have a pick, and they still don't have a defensive alignment of, of any kind. Um, Quinn said tonight that that you know he likes the guys on his roster. I'm telling you, I'm sitting there. It really sounded to me like what he said last year about the running backs when he didn't draft a running back. Uh, he said we're fine. We like Amir Abdullah. He's our starter, uh, and that proved to be problematic and a miscalculation of what they actually had. And I fear um, that maybe they're going back down that road again with with defensive line because. I mean, Ants could be a great player, but he struggled and has the injury stuff um, and is playing on the franchise tag. Who knows what Kerry Hyder's going to be? I fear that he was a one year flash in the pan. Um, Ashawn Robinson didn't exactly take the leap forward last year we expected. Akeem Spence was fine, but no playmaker. Up and down, there are problems and defic- deficiencies at that position, and I'm just not sure that betting on it at the, the status quo. Uh, will yield the results they want. Yeah, it seems like they're gambling even more on Ziggy Ansah when it comes to pass rush because this was the same thing last year. They didn't add pass rush, and he said he liked his guys. Then they didn't have enough pass rush, and this year they franchise tag Ziggy. They say that's why they don't spend in free agency, and then they're not drafting here. And there are a lot of edge guys that you hear, you know, names thrown out there that were possibilities. Josh Sweat out of Florida State, Ogbenai Ogronko out of Oklahoma, just a couple of guys like that. The Patriots traditionally do undervalue the, the sort of the edge rusher position. They put more into the secondary. But this is bold because if, if Ziggy's <laughs> not out there, we've seen yeah. how bad it gets. And as, yeah. as creative as Patricia can get, at some point you're limited. So, I yeah, I think they're really banking on Ziggy to perform well and to be durable since they're paying him $17 million. Right. I mean, New England last year – squeeze every ounce of that defense that they could with Matt Patricia. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, maybe Detroit's doing the same thing with him coming in here, hoping hoping that he can be this magic worker, this miracle worker that he was in New England, because I just don't see the personnel up front being what they need it to be, especially when it comes in terms of the of the pass rush. I mean, they lost yeah. to Lodi Nada. Who's going who's gonna to replace that guy? You know, it's, yeah. they were pretty rough without him. Mm-hmm. Lots of things to watch going to day three. We'll be right back here, sleep-deprived as always. Uh, he's Nate. I'm Kyle. We're M-Live. Keep it right here.